Hey friends, it's Missy again. Thanks so much for stopping in today. I have a new layout to share for Hip Kit Club and I'm using the 2021 January kits again. And I'm finally going to use this adorable rainbow pattern paper. I've, I've been eyeballing it since I opened the kits weeks ago and I finally decided how I want to use it. And I want to use it as is, meaning I want the rainbow and the cloud and the blue background but i want to add some dimension and some things to the rainbow and um, make it kind of pop off the page because right now it's flat and you know i love to pop things up and add dimension so i'm just going to cut the whole thing out and then that white piece of cardstock that i have there that i've already cut something out of i'm going to glue the blue part down and then after I do some things to the rainbow, I'm going to put it back in its place. So it's going to have some things done to it. Um, I'm going to missify it. And so I'm going to start with white gesso. And that just means I'm going to stick my finger in some white gesso and smudge it around. And this just gives it a little bit of a faded, weathered look. And I love to do this. I love that the gesso is white. And so it gives it some lights and then the colors from the rainbow give it some darks and it just you know adds a little bit of interest to it and i love that faded look because you know it's 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 hard for me to just leave things as they are i have to kind of you know add some stuff to it so now that that's done i'm going to sprinkle some white drops on it and this is just some white acrylic paint add a little bit of water on the brush there and then just splatter it down squeeze the bristles to get even bigger drops and yeah, I don't know why I wanted to do this. I just felt like adding some white splatters and I'm gonna soften this up. I'm gonna dab this up here in a second and I'm not trying to create snow because you know, usually when it's snowing, you're not gonna see any rainbows. So I wasn't really trying to go for a snowy effect. I was just going for something different. And when I roll the paper towels over, you can see there it kind of lightens it up and I'm going to do even more things to this rainbow and I'm going to see how this looks so far on the background and I really like that um, and I decided that I wanted to make each ray look a little bit more distressed instead of one big chunk of paper so I'm going to cut along each color uh, until it gets to the cloud and then use my edge distressor to go around all the edges. I'm going to go around the cloud. I'm going to go around both sides of each color. So whenever it's attached to the background, I can kind of bend up the edges. Now I also did some machine stitching off camera. I changed each color out to match and just did some zigzag around each arc of color. And that's just going to add a little bit more detail and texture. Now I also want to add some interest to the cloud and so to prepare it for what I'm going to do I'm going to add a little bit of clear gesso here and I'm just using my finger to smudge it around the edges and I like to do this whenever I create clouds for a layout you know sometimes clouds have texture and dimension so I like to do that on my paper clouds as well so I'm going to let that dry I'm going to go ahead and attach the blue pattern paper to this scrap piece of cardstock and I'm using scotch tacky glue in my fine liner bottle there I love that glue um, works great in this bottle I've never had a clogging problem um, I just re um, not reapply but put the lid back on pretty quickly so uh, it doesn't have time to dry so um yeah the blue is down i love that and i'm still going to do some more to that but i'm going to go ahead and add my dimension to the cloud and this is the easiest quickest way i use a dark gray gelato and all i do is scrape a little bit of it on around the edges of the cloud and then dip my finger into some water and smudge it around the gelatos are great for that that's that's not in the kit this month that is from my stash but um they're great they're like little lipsticks or little uh crayons you know in a sense and they smudge really easy with your finger you uh you don't even have to use water but i love using the water because it kind of turns it into watercolor and since i added that gesso it blends and uh, turns into you know watercolor really nicely here and you can see how easy it is to blend it and i think the gray is a good choice because it just adds some 
reality to the cloud, even though this is obviously <laughs> not realistic, but it just gives some dimension. And I think in the end, it makes a difference. So I go around the edges with that and just kind of dirty it up. But I love it. So that is that. I spent a lot of time on this rainbow. <laughs> and I even tried to add the white splatters to the cloud here, but you can't even really tell it. So I could have just skipped that part. I don't even know why I did that, honestly, because it's white on white and, you know, you can't even really see it. But who knows? Sometimes things go into my head and I just try it and then I'm thinking, why did I do that? All right. I like how that's looking. And so now I'm going to work on the actual background. I want to add some interest to this flat blue paper. And to start that process, I'm going to use white gesso. And so I'm going to basically keep the mixed media on this part kind of to the left side of the rainbow. And I'm using white gesso here because I want to kind of fade out some of this blue and I want to create a little bit of a white space to work with. Because if I was to use clear gesso here, it would not affect the blue in any way. And I want to kind of give it a nice faded, cloudy effect. So that's where the white comes in. And you can kind of see there what I'm talking about with the white. It's still very subtle. Um, I'm still letting that dry. So in the meantime, I'm going to go ahead and pop up the rainbow. I want this whole thing, the cloud, all the rays to be dimensional. So I'm just using some adhesive foam there. I'm going to cut up little pieces and voila, that's done. This is going to really make everything pop up. And this is why I cut each ray because I can kind of come in now with each color and kind of bend up the edges and just make it look really rough and textured. And it's just going to create that much more dimension. So I love that. And so now to add some interest to the background, I'm going to do some mixing and matching with colors that, um, we've gotten in the current kit. I think this blue spray is from the January kit. It's a Vibes Snowway Man and it's a Shimmers and I'm going to mix it with a Lindy's Starburst spray called Mad Hatter Mint that we got a long time ago because I, I don't want sky blue and I don't want green. I'm trying to get a variation on that aqua blue color that is the background and uh, I'm just trying to add a little bit of a tone on tone I guess you could say. So it's kind of in the same color family as this background color, but it's just going to add a little bit of a darker uh, watercolor area. And I'm using the packaging technique here. You can see how awesome that is. Um, just adding a little bit at a time. And then I'm using my brush with a little bit of water to help scatter that around, or not scatter, <laughs> spread it around. And the white gesso is, is what is allowing that to happen. Because if I would not have used gesso and I would turn the plastic over, it's going to immediately soak right through the paper. And so you're not going to get that nice, soft, blended effect unless you use the gesso. So I'm going to keep working on that. I'm going to do splatters. I'm going to do more of the packaging technique. And I really love this. And I didn't want to do any other colors because this blue kind of represents the sky since we've got a rainbow and a cloud. And so I wanted to kind of keep this as a, you know, an imitation of the sky. And so that's why I kind of went with a similar color instead of a pink or a yellow, because it just would not have looked right on this blue paper. But there you go. I've got that done. And I really love how that looks. It just looked like the, the paper got wet and it started to bleed its own color. And I love that. You can see the dimension I've got going. And now I decided that I needed more clouds. I haven't even picked up my pictures yet. I'm just making this background and I'm going to worry about pictures later. Sometimes I start with a picture and sometimes I just get carried away with the background and I'm thinking I'll worry about pictures later. That was the case for this layout. I felt like the left side needed a little something. So I'm going to just wing it here and cut a, a similar type of cloud from white cardstock and run it off the page over on the left. And I'm going to do the same thing that I did earlier. I'm going to rough up the edges and then use my gray gelato again to add some, some gray area and use my finger in the water. Same thing. Yeah. If you have never tried gelatos, highly recommend. They are awesome. And you can do so much with so little, you know, just a little smudge of color goes a long way with these. And 
Uh, I've never had to replace any of my colors and I use them, you know, I've used them a lot over the years. Um, but I'm gonna, yeah, okay, here are my pictures. I finally decided, <laughs> yeah, I, um, I went back and forth about whether to use color photos or black and white and I just couldn't find any in color that I felt would be showcased nicely with all these colors. Um, and I, I wanted the photos to stand out and I also wanted the background and the rainbow to stand out. And so I just went with three small black and white selfies and I'm gonna kind of do two of them on the big cloud and then one of them above kind of tucked under the red ray where it kind of is now. I think that's kind of my plan. But um, I'm gonna pop up that cloud that I made on the left and then go ahead and add a little bit of tissue paper behind all the photos. And this is just gonna give them a little bit of a, a little subtle hint of a layer behind there and kind of help separate them from the background. Um, you know, my, my first priority in scrapbooking is always to showcase the photos. And I know I spend a lot of time on the backgrounds and things, but I never want mixed media or patterns or colors to overshadow the photos because the whole point is, you know, you're scrapbooking a photo. So I always want the photos to be visible and to stand out. And so I felt, you know, black and white was a good choice for this one. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and add glue to this massive rainbow here. That's a lot of adhesive foam, <laughs> but I'm gonna add all the glue down and put it right back where it goes. And I love that. I love big elements like this because it just, it makes your design come together quickly and easy. And it kind of gives you some spaces already to add your photos. Like when I first saw this paper, I thought photos can go on top of the cloud. They can go to the left of the rainbow. So many different options, but it kind of, while you have a lot of options, it also helps you narrow it down, you know, um, because you don't really have a lot of space left because the, the rainbow is the main element. And I love, I love when a pattern paper can do that or a cut file can do that. It just helps you narrow down embellishing and photo placement and things like that. So now I'm gonna start to play around with embellishments. I've got some puffy stickers. I've got the, uh, some chipboard stickers. I've got two of those little butterflies. One is chipboard, one is a puffy sticker. And I think I'm gonna use that wake up and be awesome as my title. Um, it just kind of fits, it's small. It kind of nestles right in there to the bottom of the two photos. It's the right color, colors. So I thought, you know what? I don't wanna spend time agonizing over the title because if you look at the design of this page, where would I put a really big title? You know, I, I'm not gonna put it on top of the rainbow. I'm not gonna put it up in the sky. Uh, so I felt like the wake up and be awesome was perfect because it's uh, small, it's compact, and it fits right there. So that part was basically done for me. I'm gonna use that little Good Stuff puffy sticker. It's a little speech bubble. I'm um, using a piece of a chipboard frame as a little layer underneath that, that photo right there. And then I'm gonna make sure the photos are popped up. So this is gonna be a very dimensional layout because the rainbow itself has already popped up. And I'm gonna pop up the photos so yeah, it's like a dimension palooza here. I just can't stop myself from popping things up off the page. It's not that dimensional though, as far as um, it still will easily fit into a page protector for an album. So I'm not worried about that. Um, I am going to come in with some thread. I'm going to use yellow. I was looking at the rainbow and thought, what color do I need to bring over to this left-hand side? And I thought yellow would be a nice bright pop against all of the blue because, uh, you know, all the color is on the right-hand side and it's there's not a lot going on on the left-hand side. And so I thought yellow would be a nice addition to that side. And I like the thread. It gives little pops of color. It gives fun texture. And it just adds to the whole messy idea of the background, I think. So I'm gonna slowly start to glue things down. Things that I know I don't wanna move. I know the photos are gonna go where they're going. I know that the title is gonna go down there at the bottom, but I do want to add some more thread and I felt like pink. I don't know, I was just feeling pink. I've got the, the purple down there with that little bow. My hand is covering it, there it is. Uh, that's purple. And then the little clip 
I guess you could say it's a clip, over to the right of the right side photo. It's like a little big paper clip and it's got some of the yellow color in it. And so I thought, well, we need some pink. So that's pink thread down there beneath the title. And I'm liking how this is looking. I don't want to add too much more. I mean, I had several other things picked out to use, but I, I didn't want to make it so busy and I didn't want to keep adding things to cover up the rainbow because I wanted it to show. I do make a couple more clouds. I felt like something needed to go there, but something solid. And it was clouds. And I think that that just makes the whole layout right there, adding in more clouds. Because not only does it add some interest to that area, but it also kind of, you know, clouds are layered. They're on top of rainbows, they're behind rainbows. And it just, again, brings the layout a little more, you know, into the 3D. It just gives it some, some uh, perspective. So I did the same thing. I just free cut those from some cardstock and then added the gray gelato around those. Oh yes, and of course, more dimension. I hope they never stop making this adhesive foam because I'm kind of addicted to it. I think I add it behind everything. Good grief. Um, I do add this little tiny piece here. It's got a little rainbow and cloud and it's actually a chipboard piece, but I just kept peeling it off until it was basically like paper. And I'm gonna fussy cut that out and I'm gonna add it to the left side, kind of like it's coming out of that photo there. And I like how that adds little pops of color to that side of the page. Uh, I didn't wanna add anything that was really big because I wanted the clouds to kind of remain open and fluffy and white uh, because there's so much color going on, it kind of gives the idea of some white space. I do add some smaller things and I love this sheet of puffy button stickers. So I'm gonna add in some of those for some pops of color, but I do want to kind of stitch through them. So I've got some gold embroidery thread here with a really big needle and just kind of quickly add some gold into the centers of some of these buttons. Some of them are not, uh, or some of them do not have holes, but some of them do. So I'm just gonna quickly add some shiny gold in the middle of those and then stick those in a couple spots. And I like that these are small. Again, they add little pops of color and I love those. Almost done here. The last thing I'm gonna do is add my journaling in. And I originally was gonna use my gold pen, but then I had a change of heart and thought, no, I'm gonna use my black pen. And then it ran out of ink. So I had to go digging for a new black pen. Luckily, I had one. There's my big thick Coke bottle glasses, so attractive. Um, anyway, I'm using a black pen because the photos are black and white and I felt like it was fine. And then the last thing I'm gonna do is add in some gold glitter spray. This is from a hip kit color kit back in 2019, but I still use it. Anyway, that's the final layout. I really love how this turned out. I think it was really fun. I hope this photo was okay. It's really, really sunny here today when I photographed it. And so it was really hard to edit. I tried to get the, the colors right, but I took a lot of close-ups here and you can see all the dimension and all the stuff that I did. But this was a lot of fun to make. I really like the tone on tone background. I love how the rainbow turned out. I love just taking a basic pattern paper and kind of making it my own, you know? Don't be afraid to cut it out or stitch on it or add some paint to it. Uh, whatever you feel like doing to make it different, to make it stand out. But uh, yeah, enjoy all of these close ups. I hope you guys got some ideas from this or some kind of inspiration and I will see you in my next video. I hope you guys have a great week and thank you so, so much for watching.